There is a word called Pi. Maybe you heard of it? It's not this Pi, but it's this one. Back in the days, we didn't associate this symbol with the famous digits of Pi we know, but it's more of a geometrical representation. You define it by the ratio of a circumference of a circle over its diameter. Likewise, in the infinite realm of numbers we have, there is one particular quantity hiding there. Now this time, instead of talking about a circle, we talk about a segment, which ratios will be equal to some quantity that we will call phi. One of the first one to discover this was actually Euclid, approximately 300 years BC, and little did he know that he actually quite influenced the world of math today with this discovery. It literally changed our way of perceiving nature all the way down to the plants it contains, all the way up to the creatures it's hiding. It changed our way of viewing the buildings we built as a human civilization, all the way up to the movement of planets and stars and galaxies. He had quite some influence on us. That being said, I present to you the Golden Ratio. Quick side note. Welcome! So, if you're new here, my name is Yunus, freshly graduated from mechanical engineering. I make videos about things I learned or things I want to learn, for example this video. I mainly try to explain things or program things in Python for everyone. So if you're a student, you're in the right place. If not, well, still watch it. Maybe you'll like it, enjoy watching, and back to the video. Now, mathematically speaking, we define the golden ratio as follows. If you, let's say, have two quantities A and B, we say that A over B is a golden ratio if it's equal to their sum over the largest quantity. Now this equation wise would mean that A plus B over A is equal to A over B. Now we can go ahead and solve this equation by doing a cross multiplication and then rearranging our terms. So we can find a second degree equation on B where A is a parameter or we can also take A as the variable and take B as a parameter. Now, by computing the discriminant of this equation, we will find that it's equal to 5a, which is positive, since a is positive. Now, the square root of this will be equal to a times square root of 5. We then get the solutions b1 and b2. We will refuse the second solution of b since it's a negative one, where we assume that b should be a positive number. Now, remember, we are interested in the ratio a over b. So since we already computed the value of b, we can very easily express this ratio. Rearranging a little bit this algebraic expression of b, we will find that a over b will be equal to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Now it is actually this quantity that is denoted in mathematics as phi or phi, which represents the golden ratio. If you go ahead and compute it, you will find that it is roughly equal to 1.618. Now it is actually this number that mostly defines the beauty of our nature. But let's say you're just not impressed by this number. Okay, You tell yourself, yeah, so what's so special about it? Well, okay, let's say you're not a number file like these guys. You don't dream about numbers all day. And you're not impressed by the fact that you can compute it with 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 until infinity. Or that you can compute it with square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus square root of 1. Now it doesn't seem like so, but it's actually very funny to say it like this. But let's say you're not a number file and you're not impressed by any of this. But trust me, all the beauty has not been yet unleashed. There is actually a quite impressive pattern you see in nature. Something utterly satisfying to see, something that brings you an inner peace when you see it. It's like a sign of nature that is absolutely beautiful. Now, believe it or not, we can actually represent this pattern with this sort of spiral. It is known as the Fibonacci spiral and is actually very closely linked to the golden ratio. Now, we can see that there is a sequence of numbers, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. But before we take the time to discuss any further about this sort of link, let's actually discuss about the Fibonacci sequence, for instance. The Fibonacci sequence. Let me tell you the story of some dude back in the 12th century. He had a problem. Now look, problems back in the days looked a bit different. You didn't have social media or internet. This dude's problem was a bit special, you know? He was wondering if he had a newly born pair of rabbits, 
after 12 months, how much rabbits would he have? I mean, given it's the 12th century, it's equivalent to having a life crisis, you know? So he was wondering, and he actually really wanted to know this answer. So he have set some assumptions, being you start off with a young pair of rabbits, each pair of rabbit reproduces a new one after every month, and it takes exactly one month for a newly born pair of rabbit to start reproducing, as well as rabbits never die and it's the ideal environment and so on and so on. Now let's actually simulate this experience. Now we are starting with a baby pair of rabbits, so they are still not able to reproduce. The total number of pairs is equal to one. One month after this baby pair is growing, being able to reproduce, the total number of pair is still equal to one. Now in the second month, this pair of rabbit will reproduce, giving birth to a newly born pair of rabbits, and the parents will remain. Now, continuing this experience, we will see that after five months, we will have five rabbits. Now, because of displaying purposes, we will end it at five months. But if you continue this experience yourself, you will see that after one year, so at the 13th month, you will have 233 pair of rabbits, which is equal to 466 rabbits. By the way, if you were wondering, this dude was called Leonardo Fibonacci, also Leonardo de Pise. And uh, there we have it, problem solved. Now remember, we said earlier that this sequence is somehow linked to the golden ratio. Well, actually, it doesn't seem like so, but if we add a third row called ratios, where we will divide each consecutive numbers of this sequence, so for example 2 over 1, 3 over 2, etc. You will find something quite particular. The more we advance in the sequence, the closer we get to the golden ratio. Now again, it's always just an approximation. We will never actually reach the exact value of this ratio, since it's a irrational number. And irrational numbers tend to have an infinite number of digits. Now, surprisingly, Fibonacci himself didn't make this connection. It was actually Johannes Kepler that did, the same guy that set the math for the movements of planets. Now, following that, the golden ratio and the Fibonacci spiral got a lot of popularity. It was in the early 1600s that people started noticing the golden ratio appearing everywhere. Some claim that they can view it whether in nature, human, art, structure, animals, everywhere. It was in a way known as the universal number. Now this was very debated. We always have split opinions. So people started arguing whether it is actually a universal number or it's just a myth. So let's actually use our brain, the gifted thing we have as human beings. Now let's think about it. Let's be critical about it. Now, critical thinking means that we are pragmatic about something. We put away our ego and emotions and solely focus on the problem, intellectually. With that in mind, let's actually see if it's really used universally or it's just a myth. Now, the five fans noticed that the golden ratio is actually used almost everywhere in buildings. But that's a myth because people in a way are starting to force the spiral in these buildings. It's a way our brain uses to find patterns in nature. It's like when you have a face made up of a eye, nose and mouth. Notice how you start seeing it everywhere. That's weird, right? Let's take for example the Eiffel Tower. Now if you want to measure it, there is actually more than one way to do so. And then foreseeably you will find that one measure that is approximately equal to the golden ratio. And then people will start generalizing it over the whole structure, saying it was purposefully made with the golden ratio. Like the human body, for example. Indeed, there are some proportions that are closely linked to the golden ratio, but then a lot of other proportions are not equal to the golden ratio, so we cannot say that the human body has perfect proportions, as each proportion varies actually. You know that beauty standards varies across country and culture, and there is actually more than 15,000 cultures, just so you know. The most popular example about the golden ratio is the Nautilus. Not this one, but this little fan. Now, for some reason, everyone thinks that the shell of this creature represents a Fibonacci spiral. Now, yet again, this is false, because unlike this spiral, 
the shell of this nautilus grows uniformly. This is also known as a logarithmic spiral. And if you would actually superpose this on the actual shell, you will see that it fits way more this creature than the Fibonacci spiral. Now, where do we actually find this magic ratio? Now, there is something you call the golden angle. Likewise, it is a ratio of phi, of two angles. Now, let's focus on the angle B, for instance, which is approximately 100. 37.5. Now in botanic there is something we call phyllotaxis, which is basically the plants which leaves grow on a stem. You notice something quite familiar when you see these plants. Now believe it or not, it has been proven that these leaves grow each consecutive time with a golden angle of 5, so exactly 137.5 degrees on each turn. So I actually got this from a YouTube video linked in the description. But it's quite impressive because it is said that in a way it optimally distributes the water that the leaves get all the way up to the root. The golden ratio is a very special number. So I propose that instead of going left or right, we will create a third path saying that the golden ratio is a special number where we can find it in very specific aspect of nature, which still makes it a beautiful number. And with that, this close up my video, let me know what you think, and peace.